let's multiply complex numbers. And just like when we added complex numbers, and we compared that to adding polynomials, same thing happens with our multiplication. But there's one more catch. You have to remember that i squared, by definition, is negative 1. So we have to evaluate that out. So let's start with this straightforward example. Let's multiply 4i by 3 minus 6i. Well, if we distribute, this becomes 12i minus 24i squared. But 24i squared, i squared is really a negative 1, and negative 24 times negative 1 is 12i plus 24. And then we have to re remember that we're also always looking for a plus bi, so that i always comes second. So our answer is 24 plus 12i. And that's our evaluated multiplication. We can also FOIL 5 minus 2i times minus 1 plus 3i becomes minus 5 plus 15i plus 2i minus 6i squared. And again, remember that i squared is really a negative 1, so the negative 1 and the sign in front are going to change. So whenever I see an i squared, that just changes the sign in front. So this is a plus 6 instead of a minus 6. Now we combine like terms, and we're left with minus 5 plus 6 is 1. 15i plus 2i is 17i, and we have our answer. Notice that whenever we're multiplying complex numbers, we always end with complex numbers. You don't ever have to worry about it being bigger than that. We always are left with a real part and an imaginary part, even if one of them is a zero. Okay, let's look at square root of minus 49 times the square root of minus 4. Now, if you remember back to our product property of radicals, we said that you could only multiply these together if they were both real, and neither of these is real. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to convert this to a 7i, and we're going to convert this to a 2i. Now, we can multiply these together to get 14i squared, and of course, i squared is negative 1, which changes the sign and gets rid of all of that, so our final answer is negative 14. Notice that in this case we have no imaginary part. An imaginary times an imaginary is a real. All right, the last couple of examples I want to look at deal with our perfect square trinomial. So a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So notice we have 2 minus 3i squared. So what happens if we square a complex number? Well, by definition, that means we're going to be using a perfect square trinomial formula. So we're going to take our 2, and we square it, minus 2 times 2 times 3i. So there's our a and our b plus 3i squared. So when we work this through, this becomes 4 minus 12i plus 9i squared. And again, remember, an i squared becomes a negative 1, which changes the sign. So now I have 4 minus 12i minus 9, which combines to minus 5 minus 12i. So I can use the formula get my answer, or I could have decided to foiled it out, but getting used to the formula really, really, really makes it easier, and you're much faster at it if you do this. The last thing that we're going to talk about is our difference of squares. So a plus b times a minus b is always a squared minus b squared. So what if we have, say, 3 plus 2y times 3 minus 2y? Notice this meets our definition for difference of squares. So here's our a, here's our b, and we're going to get a squared minus b squared. So we just plug our a in and our b in. This becomes 9 minus 4i squared. Our i squared again is negative 1, which changes the sign. 
Instead of being a difference of squares, when we do complex numbers, it actually becomes a sum of squares, and you just ignore the i. And so we get our answers, 13. This is called a complex conjugate because we're dealing with complex numbers. And so that's how we find a complex conjugate. That's how we use our multiplication rules. And again, this gets rid of an i, which will be important when we rationalize.